Ah, I'm Greg. <laughs> I'm John. <laughs> and we're going to talk today about Annabelle Creation. That's right. We just came back from one of the noisiest movie theater experiences we've ever had, not because the crowd was scared, but because a couple of teenagers who probably snuck into this R-rated flick would not show up the entire time. John had a great time there right next to him. I loved it. So this movie is directed by David F. Sandberg, who did Lights Out. Lights Out. And uh, this is a one of those like sequel, prequel things. It's a prequel. It's a prequel. Well, to Annabelle. It's a pre-boot. It's a pre-boot. Yeah, that's the word for it, right? A lot of ways I was thinking of Ouija Origin of Evil when I was watching this. Definitely. And not just because uh, Lulu Wilson, who is also in Ouija Origin of Evil, is in this too. I didn't register that from the trailer. I was watching the movie. I found like, that out a couple days that ago. the girl in Ouija Origin of Evil? Yeah, yeah, And yeah. this is, you know, a seat. This is one of those uh, pre-boot, as John puts it. It's a period piece. And it's meant to reinvigorate the franchise, to reboot territory. It's a female-driven centric cast. The film's pretty good, though. The film's really good. I like this this trend. I, I will say, like, I'm a little weary about it becoming the new cookie cutter. I do like this trend of basically taking something that maybe didn't work modern day, especially these more supernatural movies, and mm -hmm. transcribing them into the past. Even though I don't want this to be the solution to every problem, you know, yeah. I think what worked really well for Ouija also works really well here because it does make it more of a spooky. Yeah. Ghost story gives it that sort of uh, ghost tale feel, you know, more Absolutely. so than modern day does. And I really enjoyed this film from beginning to end. I heard a couple of reviews prior to us filming while I was just setting up. I was listening to a few reviews on YouTube, mm -hmm. and I gotta say, I disagree with what a lot of people say about the first half of this movie. A lot of people were saying, like, the first half is slow, kind of dull, and I don't think that. I, I got what this film was doing from the very beginning. I yeah. thought that it was just building up, really establishing characters, really establishing environment. The setup of the story is this couple who loses a daughter 12 years later after they lose their daughter. They open up their home to an orphanage just with a few women. Now, not too many. There's like a nun and then a few girls. And the introduction into the girls seeing this home that they're going to be living at kind of reminded me of Don't Breathe a little bit because he had this really long track shot, a lot of panning around, really getting to know the inside of the house and yeah. how the entire house works. And it reminded me of Don't Breathe in the sense that this would be the playground for where everything is going to go down, for how all this is going to end up becoming a horrifying experience in the end. Yeah, there's like jump scares throughout the first half a lot, but they don't yeah. bother me. I thought a lot of them were pretty good jump scares for the most part, actually. Yeah, David Sandberg has proven himself, at least with the, all the shorts and with these two features now, like that he is pretty clever clever about his horror yeah. stuff, you know, and even the jump scares are still pretty creative. I know the first Annabelle wasn't too well received. Bringing in uh, David Sandberg for mm -hmm. Annabelle Creation was is a great choice because mm -hmm. his style is very similar to James Wan's style. I don't yeah. know how heavily involved James Wan was in producing this film, but the direction, the types of angles, the tracking shots, the pans, the way he doesn't really show much gore going on. When it comes to demonic stuff, it, it, a lot of it is really good at teasing the demonic stuff. Subtle things, Very or even subtle. things happening in the background. Yeah, you know, yeah. Little yeah. details, places that the, make you uneasy. There's a moment where you, I remember where we see Annabelle, and people are like, oh, and I was like, what? And then I see like, oh, there's some eyes of something else behind her yeah. that are very hard to pay. You, you have to like pay attention to the full picture. And the film is shot wonderfully, and it's the acting is well. really good too. The two specific actresses that stood out to me in this film were Talitha Bateman, who plays Janice. She's the mm -hmm. girl that you see in the trailer as a polio disease. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, she she's walks a, with the uh, She's on the paleo diet? <laughs> she's on the paleo diet. <laughs> <laughs> she has polio disease. And then Lulu Wilson, who we saw in Ouija Origin of Evil. And these two girls are fantastic in the film. What stood out to me about this film, too, similar to how The Conjuring is, this film is really an ensemble piece. You got a wide yeah. range of characters here. You got, like, you know, the two bully girls, and then you got the two girls who are, like, view themselves as sisters and want to be adopted together. You got the couple who lost their daughter. You, you got a couple other uh, kids we don't get to know very well. Yeah, you, know, because you, you got the nun who's watching over them. Yeah. And the film does a pretty damn good job of not losing its central focus on the Janice character while still cutting around to these other characters throughout. Yeah. It's a really good ensemble piece. Because this is a situation that affects everybody. You know, even though, like, the, the brunt of the haunting happens to certain characters more mm -hmm. than others, this whole situation affects everybody in the yeah. house. And it does do a nice job jumping 
jumping back and forth between yeah. those, and that leads to some pretty cool set pieces. And there was a lot more creature effects than I was expecting. Practical effects are some pretty good CGI. It's not heavy on CGI. Yeah, yeah. they seem like they really yeah. used it where they needed it. You know? Yeah. And that was a good choice. Like, that's a smart choice. There's some great sound design, some awesome buildup of tension throughout. It's like the first half of this film, I get why some people complain about it, because it is the slower part of the film, but it's all building yeah. up, because the finale, like, maybe the last 30 to 40 minutes, somewhere there, is insane. <laughs> it's like yeah. a thrill ride. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. Last, the finale of this movie does get really... Yeah, it goes for It's it, intense. You know? It's a really intense finale. It is awesome. The Annabelle mythology is built in an even better way, I think, than yeah. we've had before. I, I I started to understand how a lot of this works a lot better. I feel like in a lot of times when you watch horror movies, as an audience member, a lot of times as an audience member, you can feel like you're smarter than the characters that are in the movie. <laughs> and this film is not filled with that. Especially because you can be a lot more forgiving because of the time this movie takes place in, the lack of resources they have. They're in an isolated environment, mm -hmm. and it is, you know, a, a, a ghostly and somewhat demonic situation yeah. happening to a bunch of people who are very of faith. Absolutely. You know? Although, without giving too much away, there's a character, it's a horror movie, characters are gonna die. Yeah. There's one time when a character dies where when their dead body is found, it's not like they had a heart attack. It looks like the, their soul was yeah. sucked out of them. Almost they, like the ring or something yeah, like that. It, it yeah, it looks a lot like that. And then the way the main characters kind of just brush it off, like, oh, it's probably just, you know, I had a heart attack or something. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm yeah. like, no, gosh, we, we, we these other what? girls have been warning you about that there's probably some demon ghost stuff like, going no on with this heart death. It's a clear seen. resemblance of that. Yeah. That's the only time in the movie where I'm like, uh, come on. People started laughing the, yeah. when the very next shot, the nun character's like, alright girls, get back to bed. And people in the audience started laughing because that was the one time where I'm like, that was a stupid character decision right there. Other than that though, the film is definitely not filled with that. A lot of times I feel like the characters are kind of smart. The Lulu Wilson character has to, at times is very isolated and has to outwit the demon and I think she does a really good job in every decision she's making. A lot of the time too, you know, you're you're with kids. You know, mm -hmm. you're, you're with kids and they're kind of isolated, you know, even though there is a certain number of adults around that tends to change, you know, you are kind of, that makes the situations that much more intense because, Absolutely. you know, you are watching Ch children try and invade, you know, horrifyingness. <laughs> yeah. And one thing I, I credit this film on too is how they handled the prologue of the film. That was one of the mm -hmm. first things I was telling John after the movie was done. A lot of times in horror movies, when they have a prologue, it's kind of just this expositional setup thing or a tease for something that gets elaborated on much later in the film. The way this prologue is done, you, you're pretty much sold this is the beginning of the film and this is how the film is going to proceed from here on out. Yeah. And then when it has this sudden moment where it cuts to Annabelle creation, and I'm like, oh, I've been invested in this film for like 10 minutes already, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a nice organic way to, to open the story up. And again, it gives it gives it that ghost tale kind yeah. of a feel, you know? And that's, that's something I really like about what they're doing with this. It does feel like it's fit nicely into the Conjuring world without it being like, hey, Conjuring, yeah. right, guys? And there's a couple of Easter egg, uh, there's a post credit yeah. scene, <laughs> you know, like that's setting up a completely separate movie that has nothing to do with Annabelle, <laughs> you yeah. know? They are doing that, they are building their universe, but it's it really it's isn't- It's too intrusive. No, it's not super duper in your face. I still felt like, David Sandberg and the studio set out to make a really good movie that was setting out to do um, a good pre-boot on yeah. uh, what, what happened after the first Annabelle solo movie happened. They wanted yeah. to just make a really good movie and not worry too much on universe building. Although there is a couple of teases there, it's really not in your face. There are a couple of teases to things that we already know exist. Yeah. You know, it's it's that kind of a thing. This movie really got me to understand the universe they are building. It's this religious horror universe they're building, which I really do love a lot. Like, religious horror is uh, one of my favorite horror genres. It's like three out of four of these films are pretty damn good films, <laughs> you know? Yeah, well, and it seems like they, they care about the right things, and they're, you know, making some interesting choices. It's like, you know, having this ensemble of different girls together, you know, in this house with this odd, you know, doll maker guy and his 
yeah. his wife who's like kept in the next room. Like it is kind of an intriguing situation and it does just kind of unfold all on its own. Like it's nice that it feels isolated. The cast is all good. Even uh, even uh, Anthony Lapaglia yeah. and, uh, and uh, Miranda Otto who, you know, aren't the hugest characters in the movie. They don't have like tons of dialogue necessarily. Miranda Otto is the only character who has this one scene where you're like, boom, a lot of exposition. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But, and you know, it was nice to have but her we, on screen yeah. for a while because yeah. I think Miranda Otto is terrific. Um, but Anthony LaPaglia is, is really good in the film too. Yeah, um, and a lot of his performance is in his face and his body language. Mm -hmm. You know, just a lot of it is in the history we know about him, not so much the dialogue that he's spitting out there. Absolutely. I don't know if I if I like this quite as much as, say, Ouija Origin of Evil. I think this maybe, you know, the script could have been a little tighter. I did like it. It didn't help the screening, but I did like that it is kind of a quiet movie and there's a lot yeah. of silence and there's a lot of, like, room tone things, yeah. you know? Oh, and the sound design's great, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. so, you know, I think this is a successful step in the right direction. As far as the, the cinematic universe game is going, the people making The Conjuring right now have one of the more solid, like, I get what you're trying to do and it seems like you're focused on making good movies and, you know, making slightly, in some ways, at least different choices. So, yeah, all in all, I'd say this is just a really solid entry into The Conjuring universe. It seems like most audiences, and I can see why, I think it's a great step up after the last Annabelle solo outing. All right, Reject Nation, did you see Annabelle creation? Do you prefer it over the first Annabelle? Do you prefer the first Annabelle? Oh, you're kind of alone there. You can subscribe to The Real Rejects. Click that notification bell. He is Dat John Humphrey on Twitter and Instagram.